Okay, next up uh, on the bench is um, what could be quite a rare beast. You'll know it as a Hacker Super Sovereign. Uh, it's not the MB version, it's not got the antenna tuner, so it's the earlier version. But it's got a black and chrome grill. Now, you think, well, someone's whipped the front off a Sovereign 5 and just popped on here, but that's not the case. This radio was pre presented to the owner who worked for Hacker. In fact, he actually designed the extruded grill. Um, it was presented to him as a leave-in present. Um, and it is fairly unique, I think, that it's it's not got the normal grill on it, because normally it's just an aluminium grill on these. But um, I think that is rather smart. All the writing's there, it's just a little bit dusty, so a bit, bit dirty, I don't know where it's been, it's probably been in a garage or something like that. There's no serial number on the bottom either, so I'm just going to look to see if there's a serial number inside. Okay, yeah this has no serial number, so I would suspect this is actually a prototype a privilege to be able to work on this really. Um, what else can we say about it? The battery box is still there. No labels in the battery box. But by the looks of it I can't see any glue so I would think again that this is the original box before they decided to stick the labels in. Also, there's no, um, in most of the other ones, there's like a little vinyl strip that comes out that this pushes back into. That hasn't got it. It's got a couple sort of buffers up underneath here, under the amplifier shelf. Um, so, yeah, we could have quite a rare radio here. Well, unique radio. There's not another one like it. It'd be interesting to get inside it and have a look. But hopefully it's never been touched. Uh, it's got five pointers on the top and four on the bottom. I don't know whether that's a standard number. It might have been five and five. I'm not sure. Um, so what should we do? Should we put some power on it? Let's put some power on it. That's 12 volts. So I'm going to set the current limit in so it's just the uh, problem we got on this one is the on off switch is broken it doesn't switch off so let's use the power supply as the on off switch and connect up my uh, power supply to it Okay, well, it's, it's drawn 120 milliamps, which is far too much, and it's motorboating. So we have got issues. We have issues with possibly the amplifier board, I would think. So let's get my. Uh, Rubber mat out. Excuse the shaky cam. Let's get the rubber mat out. Get this beauty out of the chassis. So we've got two screws on the bottom.
there's little cup washers in there as well so it's worth just prizing them out because you can bet your life if you don't they'll drop out let's take the amplifier shelf out two plugs unhook the FM aerial wire there's the amplifier board again there's a little bit of um, third degree on top of that it looks like we've got no dally capacitor there no doubt that's probably what's causing the motor boat in could be these pins but Okay, that's there. Let's pop the speaker leads off. Out he pops. Interesting, we've got two rubber washers on the base of these. Normally they're felt where the screws go up through and join the chassis. I'll show you in a minute. There's, there is a little washer there. Very carefully wiggle this out. Come on. Yeah, so there's a rubber rubber washer under each foot instead of um, felt. I think that's a better idea personally, but whether they had a problem with it. Put the case to one side. So normally with a super sovereign, let's get you in a bit closer. Normally with a super sovereign in here, it stamps the serial number. This one hasn't got a serial number, so uh, yeah, pretty unique radio. So, I think what we need to do first of all is try and get that amp stabilized, or even better still, I've probably got one of my amps that will. Uh, just sitting here to prove that is definitely the problem. We've got to see what's up with this switch as well, this on off switch. Just not clicking at all. So that's going to need a, probably a new, um, new volume pot. So I think first of all what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this top panel off and out of the way because I, I really don't want to get this damaged or scratched or anything. Let's get um, get these knobs off. And I'm expecting underneath the grime to find a brand new radio here. not want to come off. Let's get, let's get the aerial out of the way. Again, aerials on these are rare, very rare. If you break one of these, you're in trouble. Okay, so to release that volume knob, I'm going to undo these um, screws. Hold the faceplate on.
So now the top's uh, loose, I can put a little bit of pressure underneath and try and pop that um, knob off. out of the ordinary there. All the uh, aluminium tops are still looking good. A couple of little dinks, I don't know whether that's damage or um, corrosion but no, they're looking pretty good. Again a lot of dust in that inside there. Okay, I'm going to give this a uh, brush off a minute in the bathroom. I'm going to get these station markers out. So to do that, I'm just going to brush out the grooves. So I've got to remember that the red ones are at the top. Be careful with these because it's easy to break the little lugs that hold them in. on a lot of super sovereigns recently a lot I had three in just from one customer see I've built some um, I well I restored one for Clint and uh, in the meantime I've worked on my own I put about four or five of these they're great radios yeah if you want a like real statement piece for your living room you know it's, it's good volume on it so I'm going to take this in the bathroom now, I'm just going to wash it with, um, I'm just going to try cold water and some, just some hand soap to start with and see how it comes up. You can see what it's like at the moment, it's um, pretty bad. Um, yeah, not nice at all, so I'm going to try that first and see how we get on. Okay, well I've gone and grabbed uh, an amplifier out of one of my uh, RP75s. You notice there is a difference in the label as well. Underneath we've got these like insulation buffer things. Almost like double glazing stuff. But yeah, we've got a different label as well. Same phone number, look. Same address, but... Um, totally different label and if you look at the base plate on this one let me zoom you in you'll see there's pencil marks showing the rivet positions you see their pencil marks for the shelf so this is literally been actually handmade Look at that. Very interesting. For a hacker enthusiast and collector, it's um, it's, it's the holy grail, but it certainly is uh, unique. You'll notice <laughs> as well, there's no markings on the circuit board. Look, no silk screen. You notice the newer one. Well, not newer, the one out of mine, production model. We've got all the markings. Yeah, this is definitely a prototype. So I've only just noticed that. But when you look at the board in here as well, again, absolutely no markings. This is amazing. Wow. We have a prototype Hacker Super Sovereign. Now, I will contact the owner just to confirm that, but um, to me, that speaks for itself. I suspect this has all been hand soldered as well. Mind you, the other one probably has been hand soldered, but yeah. 
Very neat. Yeah, see the boards are marked on the back but not on the front. I'll get another chassis in a bit later and we can compare them. But first of all, let's um let's hook this one up with the other board. Hopefully it wasn't um it wasn't a problem with the design and I know it's an early design that never worked. <laughs> I'm not going to be doing any correction on that. That's uh, that sort of stuff's for far greater people than me. So I'm being really careful with this. I don't want any damage on it whatsoever. It's a real privilege to be able to work on it. To be fair. So uh, thanks to Rolf for entrusting me with it. Got rosewood sides on this uh, case as well. Right. Limit. Put the current limit right down. Okay. So 30 milliamps, much better. Excellent. That tells me that the issue is, as I thought, the amplifier. Let's turn this up at the top so I can get to some of the buttons. So there is an issue with that pot. So if I turn it from nothing, look, click, go about a quarter way. Competition to Brilliant. Putting a costume on, was I dressing up like a little doll? It was it's just something new. Does help when you're tuning AM if you actually use the AM tuning dial because it's got two separate uh, tuner, tuners in this one. <laughs> Idiot. Right, that's yeah. I'm getting into my costume. Okay, so we have some issues. We have definitely got a knackered amplifier board that's for certain and I'm 90% sure that'll be capacitors so we've got a recap on the amp board so I think what I'll do is I'll do that first and see how stable the radio is if it's stable then I might leave it because it's so original I may even only change the capacitors that absolutely need changing on the amp board. But yeah, we've got some uh, we got some different components in here than than I've seen before, which is interesting. Put a bit of a mix and match of capacitors. Definitely, that's a Dalliot on the front there, so that's almost certainly going to be dead. 1000 microfarads, 6.3 volts. The later one's got a 1000 microfarads, um, 10 volts. So, next step then amplifier board. Let's get it apart and see, uh, see what the problems are. Okay, well that's the um, amplifier off of the board, and uh, even in underneath you can see 
and getting a bit closer you see all the pencil lines where where it's all been laid out some of you think what the hell is the idiot going on about but um yeah quite exciting really to find uh, an actual prototype so uh, hopefully uh, Rolf is going to wheel me this one <laughs> but uh, you can never know he may well outlast me but, uh, he actually came down personally and um, gave me these radios rather than putting them in the post so they must be uh, very uh, sentimental sen worth a lot sentimentally to, to him Okay, let's unscrew this and have a look inside. The, um, black is a bit chewed up around where the nuts go so no doubt they've had this um, on and off a few times but I suspect this is the first time this has ever come apart since It's always one that's just that little bit too close to the side to get a screwdriver in. Not to get a screwdriver, to get a nut driver in. Let's have a look inside then. Okay. Just have some Christmas decorations drop down. <laughs> so things I can see different on this. Um, Firstly, we've got uh, it looks like a dolly. Uh, it might not be a dolly. Something else. It certainly looks like one. Um, it'll be dry as a bone. That one, absolutely useless. We've got another make of capacitor there. I've never seen a black one of these in a hacker board. Again, this is. This is all original, there's no um, no messing about there. But like I say, there's no screen print on it at all. It looks like the uh, link has been out of it to do the quiescent current and midpoint voltage. Um, again, these round red capacitors are different. I've not seen them uh, in another hacker board like this. They're the grey cylindrical ones with the little dots painted on them normally. BC149, BC159, I believe that's the same. Yeah. We've got the two trimmers, one for midpoint, one for quiescent current. The other blue capacitors look familiar, so they look like the old Phillips, well they are the old Phillips ones. Let's see if we can get an ESR reading on this, because I'm convinced that um, this capacitor has had it. I might be wrong. Let's hook him up in circuit first, see if it will measure it. So there should be a thousand microfarads. He's actually now 1500 microfarads, well, you know, that's not going to kill it. ESR is fine. Let's try that black 100 ohm in behind there. Well, okay, now that one's, <laughs> that one's set at 220. So that one ain't no good. That could be the motor boater. This one at the back here. 30, what is it, 25, so yeah that one's pretty good, 125, one, 143, yeah, it's about 
one should be 40. So it's in circuit or leaky. So I think what I'll do next is um, we'll get a bit better reading on these. I'm going to um, unsolder one leg of each capacitor and we'll measure them again. So bear with me, I'll get the solder sucker on that. Okay, let's see if we can get this ESR meter and the um, capacitors in the picture. So let's connect the first one up and this is 40 microfarads. Now it's out of circuit so we should see what its true reading is. So it should be 20%, so what's that? Should be 48, I suppose, maximum if, that's, if my mass is right. 41. Yeah, so it's fairly high, but not too bad. This next one then, 125. 139. Shouldn't be a problem. 1000 is 1500, so he's quite a bit over this one here. Should be 100. He's reading 200, so he's going to need changing definitely. And this last one 28.5 is 25. So what we'll do is we'll change those two first, which is this horrible blue one, which I thought was a Dali, and it is an IR, E R E R I E R I E, sorry, E R I E. And this one is actually unbranded. 100 microfarads at 15 volts. Hmm. That's the same value. Right, I'm going to get these two out. We'll solder the rest back in, and or shall I just change them anyway? Um, for the sake of another three capacitors, I mean, I'm going to have to change the two largest ones in view anyway, which is going to um, alter the. I'm going to change them all. Sort it. I'll change them all. Let's get this working properly. So bear with me. I'm going to swap all these out. Then we'll stick it back in circuit and see what happens. If it's still that uh, motorboat in then, then we need to look. Mm, yeah, it could be one of the lock fits, um, but it's more than likely one of these living horrible resistors. I've had lots of problems with these boards. <laughs> these have given me the run around a lot. I've had loads of faults on them. Uh, one I had the driver transistor gone. Took a bit of finding. Another one, these one of these was really noisy and dirty, and I couldn't get my current settings right on it. And uh, a lot of them, these carbon resistors go very high, and it's that usually that takes the outputs out. So you'll be really careful on those because these are mega expensive to replace nowadays if you can get them. Right, so I'm going to carry on, I'm going to recap it. So I've got a 25, a 100, a 1000, a 125 and a 40. So it's going to be around about those. Those. Uh, bear with me, I'll let you know what I changed before. Okay, all the um, capacitors are in place now. I'm just going to solder them in on the back of the board. I fluxed all the joints just to give me a better, better bond really. I find it flows a bit better and you get a much shinier joint if you put flux on it. Do that one in a second, it doesn't look particularly nice. Let's put a bit of flux on that, it doesn't look to have taken to the lag. It's the trouble with some of these axial capacitors, got really thick legs, you need to get a fair bit of heat into the lag to 
get it to bond properly. Oh, that's better. Yep. Pretty good. See how straight we are on the main board. All good. Just maybe that one there is not quite straight enough for me. There we are. All done. So bear with me. I'm going to trim the legs off, isopropyl the base to get rid of the flux, and then uh, put it back in the circuit. See see if it works.